Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is episode 103. So on today's podcast, uh, we are actually going to talk to two of our youngest guys. I say youngest, maybe not youngest, but had been here, you know, maybe a year, year and a half. Uh, going to talk to those guys. They're dispatchers here at Oakley Trucking, and we're going to talk to them about some things that I think will be interesting to our listeners, everything from uh, from their job responsibilities to what they think about it. Were they in trucking before they came here? And how in the world did they get so lucky to end up in trucking? So we're going we're gonna to visit with uh, Jackson McNabb and Garrett Duke uh, here about and talk about a little bit about dispatch. But first, let's do an Oakley update sponsored by Arrow Truck Sales. Keith Wilson at Arrow Truck Sales in Springfield, Missouri is currently offering $1,000 off your first month's payment when you finance with transport funding or $1,000 off the truck price if you bring your own financing. They're also discounting the cost of an extended warranty by $500. Aero Truck Sales has been a longtime partner with Oakley Trucking, and that's because they specialize in first-time truck buyers. They don't do any leases. They have the best used trucks money can buy because used trucks is all they do. They don't sell any new trucks. And the biggest reason that Aero and Oakley are partners is service after the sale. It is very important to us at Oakley that when we refer you to a company, that they are a good company with good people. They do what they say, and they understand our requirements. So give Keith a call at 573-216-6047 for a good used truck, and tell him you heard about it on the Oakley Podcast. Now, on the Oakley update today, i got two quick things. One is we're doing a Oklahoma cookout. If you guys don't know this, we do this about every year. We have a big cookout at our terminal at Port 33, just outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it's a – because there's so many truck drivers coming in and out of there, we go over there and we cook for about three days for all the drivers coming in and out of there. And it is just a great uh, – Great little deal we do. We have a bunch of giveaways. We give all kinds of stuff away, and uh, but mainly we cook hot dogs, hamburgers, and there's a bunch of us from Oakley there. We have a big tent set up right there where they come in and out. So I want to invite everybody to come over there. Uh, Oakley trucking, any truck driver. We just it's kind of a it's kind of our Oakley driver appreciation. You know, we uh, we instead of the national ones in September, but we do our uh, our own whenever we want to so we're doing this one april the 12th through the 14th it's a tuesday wednesday thursday typically goes from about 10 o'clock till two something like that and we cook and we have a big good time there for a couple days so y'all be sure and mark that down and come over there to uh just outside of tulsa at port 33 for the cookout and also, I'd like to recognize a guy that's been with us a long time. His name is Steve Klosterman. He's been with us for 15 years this month. Uh, pulls an end dump. He's from Antigo, Wisconsin. Uh, just an all-around good guy that takes care of business. Uh, he's got a 2018 International. It's a black truck. He pulls end dumps. I don't know if I said that or not. But also, I've got a little bit of response. I asked his dispatcher, you know, what he thought about him. And I can't say it on the air. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, he said, uh, Austin said, I've enjoyed dispatching him over the last couple of years. He's been pretty easy going and not hard to get along with. The man likes his dirt track cars and enjoys watching his son race on race weekends. So, <laughs> Steve Klosterman, we appreciate the 15 years you have put in at Oakley Truck, and you are an asset to the company, man. We thank you a bunch for that. Okay, gentlemen, let's get started on this episode. For one, I appreciate y'all coming in here and hanging good out with you. We kind of threw this together here, you know, last minute, but it's all good. It's it's uh, going to be good stuff. Uh, before we get started, I'd like for our listeners to know who they're listening to. So let's start with Jack- Jackson McNabb. Introduce yourself for me. Uh, Jackson McNabb uh, from Jonesboro, Arkansas originally. I've uh, been with Oakley for about a year and two months now. So, yeah, so far so good. Family? Uh, yes, still in Jonesboro, actually. I've got a brother in Bentonville, Arkansas, who is a senior in Fayetteville. And then I have an older brother who's in Jonesboro as well, a sister who's in Fayetteville as a sophomore. And then actually I have four other step-siblings that are nice. mostly in Jonesboro. Big so family. Big family. Yeah. Eight of us in total. Eight oh, kids. Wow. But you're not married. No, no, no. I've had a girlfriend for a little over a year as well now, too. But Oh, good. Now we're taking it slow. So, okay. <laughs> what about hobbies? What do you do uh, outside of Oakley Trucking? Oh, all kinds of stuff. Usually, uh, just like this weekend, I'm going back to Jonesboro. I'll head out, you know, after work tomorrow, go see my parents, help him, you know, do whatever he needs to do. But uh, other than that, take it slow. You know, you you show up at work in the morning and go home at night, and then 
sometimes it's nice to just lay in bed or you you're a Razorback fan. I'm a big Razorback fan. I saw you at a ball game. Razorback fan. Well, the football yeah, game, I saw you yeah. in Little Rock when yeah. they came here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, try to make it up there as much for that um, as possible. Uh, I think the last time we were there, I was in Fayetteville a couple weeks ago when uh, the basketball team was playing Kentucky. So I was in there just going, I'm going to go try to get this, you know, get in this game. And I think tickets were going for like four hundred dollars. So yeah. I said I'll get them next time. Bailed on that one. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Garrett hey. Duke? Hey, Garrett Duke, I'm from uh, Jonesboro. I'm Jonesboro as well. I'm um, originally from Stuttgart. That's where my family's from. Um, my family lives in Jonesboro still. My mom's a pediatrician. Dad's a, a account manager for Ruskin Packaging. Um, no, no wife yet. No, no girlfriend yet. All right. Um, what are you doing on the weekends? Yeah. Weekends, I usually just like hanging out with friends, doing – various stuff uh i love going on trips ski trips i love skiing snow skiing uh, snow skiing yeah oh, I, li- I like the water ski too i'm pretty good at that okay jackson's seen me huh? yeah we're pretty good there together salt now you salt guys know each other before you came yes. Yeah. yeah yes actually we went to high school together we went to college That's, together mm-hmm. i actually got the job through mm-hmm. garrett yeah really yeah. Yeah. okay so this That'd is a team this duo here yeah, going right. on right. yeah jonesboro right. duo the Jonesboro <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that a few times. So I didn't know that. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, Garrett Garrett started in – when did you start? Started November of 2021 – 2020. I think it was 2020. Okay. So he started, and I had yeah. graduated school and was living in Benville at the time, just, you know, right at the height of, you know, the corona, you know, pandemic. So no one was hired. No one was doing nothing. You know, applying for all kinds of jobs up there, just trying to make it happen. Actually went home to Jonesboro for Christmas – and then I think a couple of days after that, I was driving back to Bentonville, just, you know, not knowing what I was going to do. And Garrett called me. I was like, hey, I don't know if you're still looking for a job, but, you know, someone had mentioned that Oakley's hiring. I said, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. I think it was within 24 hours, Scott Cowden was on the phone with me. So I came yeah. up here for an interview. And I think not long after that, two or three weeks, I was out in the shop. So <laughs> That's right. You guys had to work in the shop for, yeah. for yeah. a few weeks, I guess. A lot of lessons learned there. I enjoyed it. Yeah. There is a lot of lessons learned there. That yeah. pays off in the, yeah, it does. In the long it definitely run. Definitely does. Need some knowledge about it. The don't trailers. doesn't feel like it at the time. Though, no, right? you kind of question it going into it, but <laughs> yeah, you know, feel, once yeah. you start dispatching someone, you get on the phone with someone, and they got this and that going with you know wheel seals or all that kind of stuff, and you're like, you actually know what they're talking about. So it's definitely mm-hmm. very beneficial. Well, did you guys go to school for supply chain or logistics? I, I just or? went into agriculture business. Okay. Pretty much generalized. Yep. No, and I, I knew I wanted to do something like this. Yep. So, so that's good. Yeah. Kind of got prepared a little bit. Did they mm-hmm. even prepare you in college any for trucking? I mean, Somewhat. You know, a I little mean, bit. As far as computer I mean, no. programs, he, no. he says no. But computer I mean, programs, yeah. programs, yeah, I think some some they parts do. yes, some parts no. Um, I got an economics degree, so basically another name for a business degree. Right. So. So stuff so of the market, you know, makes sense to me. But as for transportation, I had no idea about any of it yeah. coming into this. I mean, it's all very brand new. So yeah. I agree there. Transportation wasn't the main subject in school, but we do a lot. I mean, computer pretty much all day. So I definitely learned a lot in school, figure out how to work Excel and stuff like that, Good. making it fit into the business. But actually applying, you know, what I do daily, you know, you don't do any of that in school, so. Basic but math. it helps you with, math. you know, time management. You know, I think college more or less these days is, especially undergrad, is you go into it and it's a good test to see if someone has, you know, the time management skills, the the drive to actually, you know, apply themselves to something and finish it. So right. I think uh, that is a big, big thing I took away from college. But as for, you know, like I said, working here at Oakley, then – so this different. is pretty much y'all's first job? This is my first real job. First yes, full-time job. First, yeah. first full-time mm-hmm. right Well, early. yeah, first big boy job, I guess yeah. you could say. <laughs> well, y'all got thrown right, right in the fire, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did. I, I mean, I love it. it. It definitely makes you feel like you're you're making a difference every day. You are. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's much more than just communicating with the driver. That's the, probably one of the biggest parts of it. But there's a lot more to it than just talking to the driver every day and yeah, giving absolutely. them a load. Absolutely. You can actually see, you know, you have control of making a difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that the big thing to me coming into it when, shoot, I think I, I went into it training in dumps for, I think, two weeks. 
and one of those weeks, Austin Allen, who was training me, had corona, so I was by myself for one of those two weeks. <laughs> and then uh, we had one dispatcher move, and so they decided to move Trevor to tanks, and then they told me, said, you know, you can come over and do hoppers with your own board. I think I was three weeks into it. And one of the biggest things that hit me right off the bat was, you know, you're in charge of, you know, that person's paycheck at the end of the week, you know. At the end of the day, you think about it, and it's putting food on their table and, you know, paying for, you know, stuff for their kids and their wives, and, you know, that's their livelihood. So it's a big responsibility to be, you know, in charge yeah. of that and feel like you ha you have a responsibility for that. And I love that idea, knowing that I can – make him really happy like I can you know get him on the loads he needs to be on um you know just I like enjoy making making his living for him and ha having him show positive feedback to me you know right that I'm doing a good job and that he's enjoying the job and how do y'all how do y'all gauge that every they day will or tell every, you, how do you attitude. <laughs> they will tell attitude, you attitude you know and you know the guys that are um if you get they get stuck with a load that nobody wants to do or something like that, um, you know, depending on how much they like you <laughs> or how good you do, they uh, they'll respond to that like, yeah, I'll do I'll do this for for you this time and I like, I'm willing to work with you, you know, pretty much the willingness to um, you know do what needs to be done and yep. keep them happy though. I mean that's that's pretty much the big big part there is that uh you know what what probably is your biggest responsibility when you come in uh, during the day or in the morning what's your uh give our listeners a little bit of what's going through your mind and what's your first priorities getting done first thing in the morning jackson i think a big thing is um obviously the customer needs you know something done a specific way and then the driver you know needs miles and which correlates to money so the big thing is you know, you you don't want to hold them up. You want to get them the miles they need, but at the same time, picking up when you're supposed to pick up, delivering when you're supposed to deliver. And, you know, if you get off or they get held up or something, then they end up sitting and they miss a reload the same day and they're sitting overnight, which is, you know, if, especially if someone's going home on the weekend, if you have one bad day, then, you know, that messes the whole thing up and you're sitting there, you know, scrambling for miles at the end of the week. Um so really the first thing I do in the morning is during check-ins, you know, you find out where people are, how much hours they got, and you're scouring that board at the same time, you know, because you're competing with everyone else in there, like all the other dispatchers trying to find, you know, they're trying to do the same thing you are. Good you know? loads. Yeah, mm -hmm. the good loads. You want that. So uh, that's a big thing. That's big. my biggest, you know, thing in the morning is making sure that I'm getting as much information as possible and scouring that board and finding, you know, stuff that's going to work for them that they can actually do you know, the way it's supposed to be done the, to the customer standards and also, you know, benefit them in the end. So what about you, Garrett? I would say the first thing when I wake up heading here to work, I'm thinking about what my guy's going to do the next day, what he's got for the, for the day, this day. And I'm thinking about just constantly in my head, how can I maximize this guy's time, make this guy the happiest and the most, uh, most money I can for that week, given that he has to be home or something, thinking of loads that are going to get him home, um, see how I can work him to this load that takes him right through the house and what works the best for him. Um, also trying to uh, maximize it for Oakley, too, uh, make sure Oakley's, uh, you know, uh, being Minim taken care of as long as, as yeah. with, with the driver as well. Minimizing deadhead. Mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Taking care, of, taking care of customers. How big is customer service? I, I, I mean, I know, and you guys are probably understanding it a little bit more now. Uh, it is big to take care of the drivers, but customer service. Very big part, too. And that's where you, it's a give and take. You know, sometimes you got this customer is very loyal, very great customer, always keeping us, keeping business with us. Um, say that uh, this driver is. Uh, it's, this load is not going to work for him. Uh, he's got to be home Thursday here. It just takes him complete opposite direction. We'll do oh, as uh, what we'll do is we'll put a truck that can do it, even though it might be a little further for him to deadhead. We're going to take care of that customer, make sure that load is, gets picked up on time, uh, gets delivered the, 
on the date it needs to be delivered uh and keeping that driver happy it's a give and take yeah pretty much yeah because i know a lot of customers are different and mm-hmm. you know he, he uh educating customers on truck drivers is a whole nother podcast episode yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know them understanding what a, a what a driver's life is like and daily life but getting them you know that's one of the things i've said this before on other episodes getting them home every weekend mm-hmm. can be a challenge sometimes i don't know how you guys do it I, I really don't we used to we used to not be able to do that you yeah. know years ago but we didn't have the freight that, mm-hmm. that you have now yeah. too get get guys home on the weekends you know or you know just even on days that whether it be a guy that stays out for four weeks and goes home in the middle of the week for three or four days or a guy that goes home every weekend you know making sure that you have that in your mind when he needs to be there you start looking ahead you know you see this load goes through the house or this load will once he delivers he'll be able to you know get there relatively easily you know when he needs to but the big thing especially with the people that go home every weekend is can I get him home on the weekend and can I do it with you know good miles for the week so that is Mm-hmm. That's your biggest challenge. Probably yeah. the biggest stressor of the job to me is, is that. So, so mm-hmm. how can they help themselves? Stay That's out and work. <laughs> yeah. I love the yeah. I love the guys who work, but I also understand. Yeah. I'm. I mean, I but yeah, put I mean, myself I, in their shoes, and you realize absolutely they want to be good point. be with the family on the weekend. I mean, I I go home every single night too. I can't imagine you know being even away for you know a week well, at a time so. y'all went away for a week we right? did we did you did a ride along with somebody yeah. we did how'd that go yeah. i think mine went pretty well actually um i kind of got in with a guy that that was really good um we got along and uh we stayed at it he taught me a lot about it so you know you go like in what? and about how calculated he is about it you know he brent schneider if you're listening <laughs> shout out brent uh brent taught me a lot about you know, trucking from their point of view, because it's something you don't really think about. I think I'd been doing it for six months when I ended up going on the truck with him. But from, you know, him sitting there planning out his days to, you know, how many gallons of fuel he's going to need to, because, you know, at a certain date, you know, that fuel's either going to go on one settlement or the next settlement. And, you know, when it comes to deductions, you know, that's huge. You know, if you end up getting an extra week of, or extra day of fuel on one settlement, then that's another few hundred dollars to pull out of it. So. Yeah. He was very calculated about how much fuel he got, when he got fuel, um, the hours to, you know, sitting there. I didn't realize how pressing, once you get on your 14, you know, once your 14 starts clicking down, he said, if we don't make it here by then, then, you know, tomorrow's jacked up. And, you know, he he taught me a lot about how, from a driver's point of view, you know, you think they're just, you know, put them on the load and get there and pick it up and deliver the next day, but... A lot you know, more to there's that. There's <laughs> way more to it than, you know, you, you would expect from just sitting in the desk compared to them actually right. out there driving, you know, down the highway every day. So, How would your ride along go, Garrett? I enjoyed it very much. We uh, we went up from Boxside, Arkansas, to Kearneysville, West Virginia. It was our first ride. Uh, and we were th- – th- those first two days going up there, it's about a 1,000-mile trip up there. Um, I mean, sun up to sun down, we were on the road – driving staying after it and there's no stopping we'd stop maybe i don't know 30 minutes we have our 30 minute break and that's usually when i get my lunch in um but they stay after it they they don't you know they don't did he stop me he did stop <laughs> he, he he had his lunch i think for the most part and it, he did stop and get you know get food during yeah. his 30 minute break uh but we had a great time i enjoyed watching uh how they dump you know these different places we always send them to up there and we went went over to Marietta uh, our uh, our second load loaded out of there we always do been doing those loads out of Marietta for a while so I got to see how that process worked and I just really enjoyed seeing you know their day-to-day um, I don't know one he I think I uh, pushed his buttons one time when I Told him, I asked him, can I get up at 6 a.m. Instead of, <laughs> instead of 5.30? <laughs> and then we can leave out at 6.30. He was ready to go. I mean, he's a he early up riser. early, ready to go. Yeah, better early get riser. going. Yeah. Um, so they wake up early. I mean, it's they stay after. They work. They earn their 
They're, uh, Good to see some of the facilities. Yeah, you, you, you're seeing these guys too, and all the different rules that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. they go through. Absolutely, that, putting his hard hat on, his vest, got yeah. eye protection. Not, I mean, he was. Don't were all the all uh, were all the shippers and receivers pretty, pretty nice to you guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We never really ran into any problems. Um, also, we we did go out during you know when Corona was still you know a little bit bigger, so. We went to Peachtree City, Georgia, to a certain teed plant there on our first load, and you didn't really see anybody. Obviously, there was a guy out there that told you, you know, start unloading, but I think I gave him a hat. I gave him some hats in uh, Talking Rock, Georgia, actually. Uh, they were appreciative of that. But other than that, you know, you don't – you do a lot of CB talk over the radio to, you know, check in and out. So, uh, But, yeah, everyone was good to us. Uh, no, we never went to a facility that was, you know – necessarily that bad they were all fairly clean and well operated and you know i don't think i ever ended up sitting for very long either i know some other people had some horror stories about going out about ended up sitting in a place for a few hours but i think we got you know relatively lucky with with how that went we were kind of in and out everywhere we went and stayed moving so did you uh try to dispatch yourself the first load yes <laughs> yeah i said i'm not sticking around you know arkansas Oklahoma, texas because yeah, right. we do hoppers so you know that's where yeah. we always are I, I think planned that, myself out yeah, too. That first load, I said, "I'm going to Georgia." <laughs> Put me down. But it ended up changing. I mean, it's always going to change most of the time. Um, we did our Marietta. I had us on that Marietta load, and then we ended up doing a Livingston load to Arkansas. I had us going Birmingham to Bahia, Mississippi first. Uh, it was just had to change due to the time we were getting there. Yeah. Uh, some lot of factors that play into that. Yeah, things got to go like you said, Jackson, earlier. Things got to – you mess up one day, yeah, and it, it'll it mess up a check. Put mm -hmm. you back. It, yeah, it'll it put you back, and it'll mess up a customer too. So it uh, sounds like the ride-along is definitely beneficial. It's it? very beneficial. It definitely yeah. is. Yeah, and we uh, we require I – mean, we get everybody to do that and have been for a long time, and that's worked out great to – even working in the shop. You know, yeah, there's that. a method to the madness behind yeah. the shop and the, you know, yeah. the ride-along. and. yeah. And then sit in your chair, even though I mean it's just a week, but it, uh, I'm sure the drivers out there listening are going, "Oh, come on now, that, you know, <laughs> yeah. one week ain't nothing. Get yeah. out here. And oh, I know. Don't know where you're going mm -hmm. and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I mean, they're right too. That, that can be a that can definitely be a challenge. But what else do you guys uh, you, you think about? You know, when you're in here dispatching, I mean, is it? Uh, I think just like Garrett just was talking about, you know, the plan change, you know. My day, I try to schedule my day out from, you know, from from check-ins and planning to doing workflow. Like, that's another thing you don't think about when you do this. You know, when when I thought of dispatching, you know, before I came here, I thought, you know, someone you call 911, they're like, this is the dispatcher, you know, we're going to send someone out there. <laughs> or on a trucking company side, you know, you just think that, you know, the plan's all put together and all you got to do is call the people. But... You know, here the model's kind of set up to where, you know, you're the the planner, the dispatcher, but you also handle expenses and invoices and their paychecks and stuff. So You have to look at all that. You have to yeah. look at all that, and you have to stay on top of that, and you have to schedule yourself. But you can have your loads planned out, all your guys planned out, so this is going to work perfect. Loads cancel, plants shut down, or plants add loads, and, you know, you're sitting there, and you have to have a high stress tolerance for it because you have to just be willing to say, all right, well – you know we got to you know start over on this guy or you know get a new plan and sometimes you know you think about getting him home with miles you have the perfect plan to have him do that and thursday come along and something like snap your fingers Garrett's got a happens. closer truck and yeah. takes a load away yeah. over and it happens yeah. on monkeyers all the time with those mm -hmm. hoppers and dumps fighting for those monkeyers over there yeah, yeah. so uh that does you got to be on your toes you got to be you know strict in your schedule you have to be you know, time management is big. Is making sure you're staying on top of all your stuff, but you also have to be willing to, you know, change and, you know, get. You know, we it, always so. have. I think, and you guys can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but you always have uh, out of your group of trucks. How many y'all dispatch? Forty. No, I'm at 26 right now. 30. I think about the, to be 31. 30. Okay. The highest I was at was 30. Okay, so out of that group of trucks. It's it's always you always got a few top tier guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and it did when I was dispatching. I just had those few top tier guys that just get it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What makes them different from the rest of the group? I think it's their 
their work ethic, you know. They don't, you know. Some people, you know, they drive from 7 to, you know, 7, and, you know, that's fine. You know, that, that gets the job done. You know, you plan for those guys accordingly. There's some guys that will drive till 3 in the morning as soon as that break is up or if they got to do a split break or something, you know, they don't waste any time. As soon as that break is up, they are up and they will get after it. And, you know, you sit there and you expect them to be someplace, and then honestly the next day you come in in there, ahead of where you think they are i mean mm -hmm. the people you don't worry about you put them on a plan you tell them what it is they say okay and you just know they're going to go out in there and get it i don't know what it is you know what that intangible i guess in a person is but you know some people have it they do and they're yeah. very beneficial to you know your board yeah what, what do you think I, I think i think it's work ethic too uh it's those guys that are i mean they aren't thinking about when they're going to be off uh that weekend or making plans every weekend they're they're planning on i'm going to work and make the most money i can every week and maybe take this week uh three weeks down the road take that week off and be home then um just utilizing you know their time here at oakley um making sure they get the most out of what they're doing they're going to work um it's definitely all work ethic for sure um not saying that the guys who are going home their work ethic's not good because uh, I have some guys that, you know, go home every yeah. weekend and have great work ethic. You know, when they get out there, they get after it. So yeah, not not <laughs> not putting those guys down, but, you, you know, because they are the people right. we're talking about. You know, yeah. you don't have to stay out every single weekend to be one of those people. Right. I you do probably love your the guys top-tier people are yeah, some guys of our go home. Top-tier mm -hmm. people have been here for longer than I've been alive yeah. and that, that I dispatch. And they, yeah. you know, they go home every weekend, but, you know, they paid their dues. They've, they've worked really hard for a long time. Yep. to be able to, you know, well, do that. Well, and I just ask that because it give our listeners to a chance to hear what dispatch has to say about that because it's true. I mean, I don't care. It's every, every dispatcher in this building, they have a board of drivers, uh, owner-operators, and they got you have top-tier guys. Yeah. And it's, it's not because, like a lot of people will think, it's not because of favoritism. Yeah. You know, it's because you're coming in in the morning and that guy's already yeah mm -hmm. they're done. moving they're moving before I sit they're, in my chair. You're try you wake up and that's the guy you think of is oh man yeah uh oh I don't have him a load yet and I bet <laughs> yeah, that's you that's right yeah he, I, that's he's most call of the time, me, yeah. call me about five minutes and he's calling where I'm me going next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give me a minute Remember let me get my cup of coffee before yeah, I yeah, start yeah, stressing about that that's good stuff man yeah. it's uh it's good well you guys glad you're in the trucking business oh yeah I'm enjoying it it's different isn't it it is. Like I said, nothing, you know, I didn't know anything about the trucking industry when I came into it, but, you know, it's very rewarding, and the people make it, you know, even better, yeah. especially here at Oakley. I mean, it's been, you know, it's been great. You know, the people from the people above me to the people I work with, you know, every day, it's been it's been awesome. So yeah. we got some good owner-operators. We do. Mm -hmm. we got really good people do. in the office, got good operators, got owner-operators, you know, what, uh, top to bottom. I know you guys had some notes. What did we miss? What do you got to add to this? Let's go down that. See what you got. Uh, communication, I guess we did touch on that, you know, what it takes to be successful. But, you know, there's communication with the customer and with the driver that you communicate with one, you communicate with the other, and then you got to put the two together to make a plan come together. So I think that's the rewarding part is when you, when you get from both sides and make something happen. Yeah. I, I think staying organized is a big part of working here doing what we do you talking about you staying organized us, or the driver or us us staying yeah. organized we got to keep yeah. up with the fmcsa standards and you know they got twit car coming due uh they got or they got a physical they need to do. we got to update that with the state before they're even able to get on the road want to do that when you know when they're ready to, like friday or something so hopefully by monday they're ready to roll again you don't got to have them waiting around while that stuff's being updated or um, I know I think a lot of them don't don't realize that that just those and I've said this before just take care of your business take care of your mm -hmm. stuff you know and it makes things so much simpler yeah you it know, really don't does. wait till the last day to get a physical yeah you know don't don't wait till the last day to get your truck inspected or mm -hmm. the trailer inspected or have all that stuff done yeah, some will be like well put me on a load and I'll get it later said I've literally cannot put you on this load like the computer will not let me put it on right here. like there's nothing we can do so we have to get this done yeah and you do not want it 
to end up locking you up. You want to get it done before that, yeah. just so you, you know, and, and guess don't what? Get stuck somewhere. That doesn't happen with your top tier guys. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, no. They're mostly they they already know when it's coming due. They know. Yep. They're asking me. Uh, Had a guy how yesterday. Get yeah. It done. Guy yesterday. Call me said. I, He's coming through the yard and said, I'm going to stop and get a truck inspection. I was like, you don't need a truck inspection yet. Sure enough, I get on there, and he's got a truck inspection coming up. I said, you know more than I do. I, That's good. I haven't yeah. checked it. So. That's the way you want it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Any good stories or anything uh, you all want to add? Or um, Just thinking about I remember one of my drivers, Glenn Moore, had sent me a picture of uh, them at Sledge. They do this clay barge, Sledge, Mississippi, to Rosedale. They do that for about a week. Uh, every uh, every month, uh, and he sent me a picture one day of just them all huddled around a bonfire and having a good time. And I love seeing that. Just you know, they're having a great time. They they're enjoying working, doing the work they're doing, and they're all talking, kind of like a camaraderie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's I a love lot seeing that. that. Yeah, there's a lot of that here. Uh, yeah. I've seen that too over the years, Gary. Mm-hmm. They they uh, they make good friends here. Mm-hmm. They really do. They stick stick with each other. You see it all the time, especially the guys that come through orientation. They they become friends. Friends with at, each other, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they stay connected. And they stay talking yeah, every stay, day. They, when they, they, they sure do. They sure do. No. Oh, I forgot to do the Lube Zone spot. Hey, let's take a break and hear from our sponsor, Lube Zone. So let's take a minute and hear from our sponsor, Lube Zone. This year, Lube Zone has been a proud sponsor of the Oakley Podcast. We have enjoyed telling you about all the discounts, services, and locations Lube Zone offers to keep Oakley trucking owner operators running smoothly over the road. Stop by during the final quarter of 2021, and you can still receive a $40 discount on your next PM using Shell and Dello Oil brands at any of their locations. Plus, until New Year's Eve, save $15 off any three axle alignment. Fast is back at Lube Zone. Check out lubezone.com and stop by any location to take advantage of their superior service. Anything else y'all want to add? That cover it? That's really good. I hope we don't get scrapped. (laughs) No, y'all are good. You done with yours, Gary? I think so. I mean, see. Once again, I appreciate you guys joining me during this uh, episode, and it's always good to hear from dispatch and, I mean, what's happening every day. And yeah, it's good to it, sit down and talk with you, too. It's so. good stuff to get it out there. And I, I know uh, you know, I had to twist your arm and get you in here, but uh, <laughs> no. it was good. I and, enjoyed talking. And once again, I appreciate everybody listening to the Oakley Podcast. Be sure and subscribe, comment, like, uh, and, and keep watching. Every Wednesday we come out with a new one, and we really appreciate the feedback. Feedback. Give us some feedback on what you want to hear. We'll be glad to try to do that. Once again, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week.